every now and again on our travels, Transworld Sport just stumbles across a story. And it's happened again, this time in Guatemala, where we met Max Laver. If you want to know what he does, then his dog's name is a pretty good clue. This artist is also a former Olympian, all-round Renaissance man, and someone we'd never even heard of before meeting up completely by chance in his hometown. Opa! Max starts off as an ordinary sports story, albeit from an unusual place. He discovered a talent for cycling as a teenager growing up in Guatemala City. It's a very liberating sport. It makes you feel free. I love the feeling of liberation you get when you're sitting there above the wheels. The feel of the wind on your face when you're cruising downhill and swing around a corner. I love the noise of the peloton when you're all cycling together and the emotion you feel there. That passion drove Max to excel, and in 1984, at the age of just 19, he headed to Los Angeles as Guatemala's only Olympic cyclist. It was an awe-inspiring experience. Right from the moment you arrive, you feel at a disadvantage, because you see the bikes of the other competitors, their legs, their size, even their blonde hair. And Guatemalans are normally shorter, and you feel psychologically demotivated and inhibited. You see, Guatemala has never won any kind of medal at the Olympics. That's a pretty awful record, and actually quite depressing. So what we really need is to change our whole mentality. In Los Angeles, Max finished 16th in the one-kilometer time trial. Four years later, he secured a similar result in Seoul. Given his youth and lack of proper coaching, L.A. in particular was a remarkable feat. After it, the then teenager made a bold step, deciding to leave comfortable fame at home to give professional cycling a go in its European heartland. I couldn't train properly because I didn't know the roads. The cold affected me and also the cost of living, because it's really expensive in Europe in comparison with Guatemala. Here a coffee costs you 50 cents, there it's more like four dollars. So you get to a certain point and you have to recognize you just don't have what it takes, that you've done some things wrong and that you're not quite up to it. And you have to accept your destiny and change course. So that's when I decided to start doing Art. I loved the sculptures I saw in the park and I started drawing them and that's how it all began. Lever abandoned his dream of joining a pro team and returned home. He gave up top level cycling completely at the age of just 23 and dedicated himself to sculpture. And his subsequent career has benefited from a professional sportsman's attitude to learning all those new skills. You don't have to indulge your vices to be an artist. It's not a prerequisite to have long hair and laze around all day. Art is actually very demanding. I've got to get up early and work eight hours a day. It's like a training schedule. And again, just like a sportsman, you have your results as well. So you've got to be disciplined in both fields. That self-discipline has helped Max's career take off, with his sculpture of an ancient Mayan sportsman now the property of the IOC and resident at Olympia in Greece. It was a commission that gave me a lot of pleasure because it combined the athletic with the artistic. I put a lot into that statue, and the movement I gave it is as athletic as possible. I went as far as to play with the ball myself to try to understand the movements they made and to feel what the sport was really like. Max has also produced a statue of the Guatemalan Nobel Prize winner for literature, Miguel Ángel Asturias. The original now stands proudly on one of the main boulevards of Guatemala City and has cemented his reputation. You go past every day and see that statue slap bang in front of you. Perhaps that's the work that's made me feel, yes, I really am a sculptor, a real artist. 
and I guess it's also the work that has done the most for my reputation in recent years. While Max is now a sculptor who just rides his bike for fun, his past experience in the saddle continues to shape and inform his attitude to art. A lot of the time, people in the art world don't understand sport, and people in the sports world don't really understand or know much about art, and that's because they're completely wrapped up in their own environments. I've been able to combine both together, because for me, there's also an artistic side to sport. You see, you often find that an athlete is quite a shy person and doesn't talk very much or express himself very well. But if I take my own example, when I get on a bike, I express all kinds of things through that. Leva may not have made it to the very top as a cyclist, but his art career looks a lot more promising. When Max was a professional sportsman, self-doubt was one of his main barriers to success. We don't think he'll be making the same mistake twice. Anything's possible if you put your mind to it. OK, it's tough in art as well as sport. People say, how can you be an artist and come from Guatemala, as if it's impossible to do that here? But it's difficult anywhere in the world. And it's the same for sportsmen. Wherever you come from, it's difficult to become a professional athlete. Even in the USA, you've got masses of competition, and you still have to be really good to achieve what you want. be even tougher to make it as an artist than a cyclist but if there was an Olympic medal for sculpture maybe Guatemala wouldn't still be waiting for that elusive trip to the top of the podium